If you've clicked on this instructional video, you're probably interested in learning how to catch more and bigger fish offshore. But sometimes you can't do both these things at the exact same time. In this video, I'm going to explain how you can target different types of cover to either catch bigger fish or more fish when you go fishing offshore on your lake. Let's get into it. My two favorite types of offshore cover are brush piles and hard spots. Brush piles are basically trees that have been dropped out in the middle of the lake by other anglers. Hard spots are areas of harder bottom, whether that's a rock pile or a shell bed, that's surrounded by softer bottom. Both types of cover attract bait fish and as a result bass and are great places to fish offshore. But I've learned over the years that brush pile fishing and rock pile fishing do not yield the same result, both in quality and number of bass that you catch. As a lot of you guys know, I keep pretty detailed records of my fish catches from past YouTube videos. And what I found in my data is that I catch bigger fish or better quality fish out of brush piles compared to hard spots, but I catch a lot more numbers of fish out of the hard spots compared to brush piles. In this video, I want to share my thoughts on why I believe you catch better quality fish out of brush piles, but more fish out of hard spots, and when these rules may not actually apply because there is some nuance in here that I want to get into. Hopefully this will help you decide which type of cover to target on your lake based on your goals on a given fishing day. Let's start by taking a look at a few brush piles and hard spots on the side imaging and down imaging. In this first image, we have a nice big brush pile that actually had several fish in the pile. One of the limiting factors in terms of the number of fish you can catch out of a brush pile is the size of the brush pile. If you have a really big one, like in this image, it's going to be able to hold more fish. And it's very rare that you find brush piles actually as big as the one shown here. Most of the time, it's only going to be maybe one or two trees stacked on top of each other. And it's going to be the size of maybe the front deck of your boat. On the flip side, on rock piles, you may have a lot bigger area for those fish to spread out on, like in this example here. This rock pile stretches out underneath the entire boat, and because it's maybe one and a half to two boat lengths long, there's more space for those fish to sit in the rocks, ambush bait fish, and therefore it can hold a better population of fish. Another factor at play, aside from the size of the brush pile or the hard spot, is where it's located. A lot of times you'll find that you'll have bigger groups of fish setting up on brush piles near a sharp drop off or like a ledge. Whenever there's a sharp drop off with a creek channel close by, you're going to have more bait fish and therefore more bass in that area. Oftentimes you'll have an area that has a mixture of both a hard spot and a brush pile and it will hold even more fish versus a brush pile by itself or a hard spot by itself. This is when it gets tricky because you can then catch bigger fish and numbers of fish off of a spot when there's a mixture of the two. But when you only have, for example, one brush pile set up on a drop with no rocks around, you still can have 10, 15, 20 fish in that brush pile to catch. Vice versa, if you have a rock pile that's near no drop, just on a flat nothing point, it may still hold a decent number of fish, 10 to 12 fish, but it's not going to hold nearly as many as a hard spot that's right on a sharp break or drop off. Therefore, these rules can fluctuate and vary depending on where the brush or the hard spot is located. In general, the closer the brush pile or rock pile is to a steep drop, the more fish that spot's going to have versus a brush pile or rock pile that's out in the middle of a big flat, it's still going to hold some fish, but not nearly as many. Another factor to consider is the type of forage that the bass are feeding on in each of these types of cover. Around brush piles, a lot of times you're going to have crappie and bluegill around those brush piles year-round. The bass will feed on those bluegill and crappie, and for a bass to eat a full-size bluegill or crappie, they have to be a decent size, let's say at least a two and a half pounder. This means that you're not going to have maybe as many small fish sitting around that brush pile because they just can't actually eat those bluegill. Instead, they need to be better quality fish, and that's why I feel like in general you're going to have a better quality bass out of a brush pile. Now at times you'll have shad that will move in around the brush piles and bass will feed on the shad as well. And in these cases, I oftentimes find that I catch smaller fish out of the brush piles unless those shad are gizzard shad. Gizzard shad are really big, six to eight inches long, and if you have a brush pile with gizzard shad, you're going to catch 
a lot better quality fish normally than if they're feeding on small threadfin shad. If I see a lot of small threadfin shad around the brush pile, that doesn't mean it's a bad spot, but I'm just going to expect to catch smaller fish in general, maybe pound and a half to two and a half pound bass versus two and a half to four and a half pound bass. On the flip side, when you're fishing hard spots, the primary forage for those bass is going to be either crawfish or smaller shad. Crawfish are only two to four inches long and are a great snack for even smaller bass that are a pound to two pounds big. You can find better quality fish feeding on crawfish as well, but you're going to have a bigger variety in terms of the size of fish in those rocks. It's the same thing if you have smaller shad there. It'll attract one pounders all the way up to five and six pounders. This means if you have 40 fish on an offshore hard spot, you might find that two thirds of them are under two pounds and only a third of them are over two pounds. On the flip side with the brush piles, you may have 10 bass in that brush pile, not as many, but all those fish are gonna be two and a half to four pounds. This means that on average, you're gonna catch a better quality fish when you do catch one out of a brush pile versus around the rock piles. Now, that being said, I've caught ton of big fish around rock piles and hard spots over the years, five, six, seven, eight pounders. So I'm not saying you can't catch big fish. I'm talking about on average, the average quality of the bass is going to be a little bit smaller in the rocks and the hard spots versus the brush. Now, I also want to talk about the best baits to fish around hard spots and brush piles so you know what to throw in them, not just if or when you should fish them. My go-to bait in both scenarios actually is a football jig. This is by far the most versatile bait you can fish offshore. You can drag it on the bottom through the rocks, work it through the heart of a brush pile, and you can also hop it off the bottom for suspended bass. It works in sunny skies, cloudy skies, wind, no wind, it doesn't really matter. And the football jig I go with is the Fish the Moment Offshore Jig that I designed with Jewel Bait Company. The reason I designed this jig specifically is because there wasn't a great jig on the market, in my opinion, that worked really well through rocks and through brush. This football jig has the tried and true jewel head design that has these unique grooves and the line tie that pulls through rocks better than most jigs on the market. We also added a double cable guard to help it come through brush better than pretty much any jig on the market as well. The problem with the standard brush guard in a football jig when fishing brush piles is that it's just not stiff enough to prevent the jig from getting hung up. So if you threw a football jig in the heart of brush all day, you are probably gonna lose five or six on a single fishing trip. But with that double cable guard, if you have the guards set up properly and spread them out, raise them up, you're going to be able to fish through that brush pile almost every single time. And I usually only lose maybe one to two jigs if I'm fishing brush piles all day with a football jig. The jigs also are sold in a two pack for $6, so it's a good price. So even if you do end up breaking them off, it's not gonna break the bank. And we sell them just on jewelbait.com. I'll leave a link in the description. And that way we can save some of the retail markup and we can give you these jigs at a really good price. So check them out at jewelbait.com. It's my number one go-to bait in both rock piles and in brush piles. I pair that with a Jewel VersaCraw Junior. This is the jig trailer I designed for this Fish the Moment Offshore jig. And it's really versatile, gives you a lot of different options to adjust the trailer. And you just pair that up and you're good to go. I'll throw that on the Denali Covert Light 7 foot 2 heavy action worm and jig rod. This is a great football jig rod. It has a fast tip, a lot of backbone, and when you set the hook on those fish, you're just gonna drive that hook home and get them in the boat. I'll pair that with either 14 to up to 18 pound Sunline FC Sniper. If I'm fishing in clear water, I'll go with 14 pound test. If I'm in dirtier water, I'll go up to 18 pound test. You can just split the difference with like 16 pound if you just want a good versatile line for everything. And as always, just got my $50 Algarcia Black Max reels. So that's my first brush pile and rock pile bait that I throw in both scenarios. Now the next few baits here are going to be specific to either a brush pile or a rock pile. And the first I'm going to talk about is one of my favorite brush pile baits. It's another jig and it's the Megabass Uoze Swimmer Swim Jig. It's a three quarter ounce jig that I put a Kitek 4.3 inch swim bait on the back of. Thing about this Uoze Swimmer Swim Jig, and I've made a video about this that I'll link in the description if you want more info, but it has this underspin blade on it. And what you can do is swim this over and around brush piles without getting hung up but still imitate a shad really well. Having that underspin blade gives it a little bit extra flash, and it's just subtle enough that you're not going to spook any fish if they're not 
aggressively feeding. So if the fish are kind of in that inactive mood, it's a sunny day, kind of calm, I'll swim this three quarter ounce swim jig around the brush piles, trying to work it just over the top of them or around them, and you can usually get some really good fish to commit to this bait. You don't want to fish this jig in the heart of the brush piles like my offshore jig. Instead, it's meant to be swimmed uh, or swam over the top and around the brush. And so it's something that gives these fish a little bit different look from the football jig, but it's still weedless enough that you're not going to lose a ton of baits. I'll just pair this on my swim bait rod, which is my Denali Covert Light, seven foot six, heavy action, moderate, sorry, heavy power, moderate action rod. It's a swim jig rod, and the moderate action means it has a little bit of tip to it, which is good when these fish are biting a moving jig like this, but it still has heavy power, so you can set the hook on them, pull them away from the brush. I just pair this on 14 to 16 pound Sunline FC Sniper, Black Max Reel, and we're good to go. Now another bait I have a lot of success on in brush piles is actually a deep diving crankbait. Now this seems a little bit counterintuitive to throw a treble hook bait in brush, but I have caught some of my biggest bass of my life cranking brush piles. The crankbait I decided to go with is the Striking 6XD because it has a nice wide build that deflects off brush really well. The key with these crankbaits is if you're fishing them through brush, you just need to keep reeling them until you hit the brush, then stop when it hits the brush pile, let it rise up a little bit, and then continue reeling, and you just kind of work it through the brush nice and slow. You can also pull your rod to pull it through the brush, and I'll make a full video here soon, guys, talking about how to worm a crankbait through brush piles, because it's a very specific technique, and I'll show you what I'm doing with my rod and everything like that. But the key with these crankbaits is that they will work really well the brush, around brush when you have current or wind pushing around that brush pile. If you have a really windy day and those fish are in that brush, you can crank them and honestly, most of the time, the crankbait's not even gonna touch the brush pile before those fish absolutely crush it. If you do get hung up with this crankbait in the brush, you probably weren't gonna get bit on the crankbait anyways, so it's not that big of a deal. But if you put this thing anywhere near a brush pile when they're actively feeding, you're gonna catch some big ones. I'll just throw it in either like a sexy shad or this sartreuse powder blue back color and you're pretty much good to go. Now in terms of my setup, I actually fish this on a little bit heavier line when I'm fishing a crankbait around brush piles. I'll go to anywhere from like 15 to 16 pound monofilament line. I don't like to throw the fluorocarbon as much because I want to be able to pull on those fish pretty hard when I get them hooked. And with monofilament, it has a little bit more stretch and you can pull a little bit harder and get those fish away from the brush without pulling the hooks away from the fish. And I'll pair that on a Denali Covert Light seven foot six medium heavy action crankbait rod. It has a moderate action to it, um, sorry, I keep saying action and power. I need to, I made a video with Denali and I still messed it up. If you guys want to check out my video explaining rod action and power, you can check that out down below too. But it's a medium heavy power, moderate action rod. And it's a nice crankbait rod. And I'll just pair that with a 541 Abu Garcia Black Max winch reel. Got it for like 40 bucks at Walmart several years ago and it works pretty well. So if those fish are actively feeding, go with a crankbait. Now, if they're not actively feeding, another great alternative to a football jig around brush piles is a big 10 inch worm. And the other content creator here at Fish the Moment, Jimmy, has been wearing them out out of brush piles on a 10 inch worm recently. And basically all this is is just a zoom uh, big old monster 10 inch worm. And I'm pairing that with anything from like a quarter ounce to a three eighths ounce Denali tungsten slip sinker and a five out Gamakatsu EWG hook. You can throw this big worm around the brush it imitates bluegill and bigger bait fish and the fish will just eat it up. I actually will alternate between a football jig and a big worm in the summer because sometimes they like one better than the other. I would say the football jig is better around rocks and stuff like that. So I will always start with a football jig in both scenarios, but if they're really not eating the jig that well, you can go to the big 10 inch old monster worm and put a lot of good fish in the boat. I throw this on a Denali Covert Light, seven foot six, heavy power, fast action rod, and I'll put this with 18 to 20 pound uh, FC Sniper fluorocarbon line. With that big worm, you're fishing it in the brush and around cover, so you can go with heavier line, it's not that big of a deal. 18 to 20 pound test, and you're good to go with a Black Max reel, and those are my key brush pile baits.
Now the goal of this video is not to tell you to not fish rock piles. On the contrary, rock piles are a great place to catch both quality and numbers of fish. But the reason I wanted to make this video is because some anglers have different goals when they go to the lake than others. For example, a tournament angler may try to catch their biggest five bass. And if they want to have the best chance of catching five better quality bass offshore, then they're better off fishing brush piles over rock piles if they have both options. On the flip side, if you have an angler who just wants to go catch as many fish as possible, have a fun day, and put more fish in the boat versus catching really big quality on every fish, then fishing rock piles is actually a better way to go. I find that in my videos, I fish rock piles more often than brush piles because when I do find a good offshore rocky spot, I'm going to be able to put 5 or 10 fish in the boat pretty quickly with some good quality but also a lot of numbers. But if I was, let's say, practicing for a tournament and had three or four days to practice, I would probably be looking for brush piles instead of the rocky spots because I know that if I fish 15, 20, 30 brush piles over the course of a tournament day, my best five will outweigh the five fish on the rocks more often than not. Maybe not every time, maybe seven out of 10 times. And in fishing, it's kind of like gambling at the end of the day. It's all just these probabilities. So if you are trying to maximize your total weight of your fish, brush piles are probably the way to go, but if you're trying to catch numbers and just have fun out there offshore, finding those hard spots, those rocky spots, is probably the better way to go, especially for newer offshore anglers in my opinion. Now that I've said all of that, I'm about to throw a big monkey wrench into everything we just discussed. Within the hard spot category, there's one type of hard spot called a shell bed that bucks all the rules, all the trends. Shell beds are basically mussel shells that accumulate on a certain area, and they attract bait fish. Specifically, they attract big bait fish in my experience. What I mean by big bait fish are gizzard shad that are 5 to 8 inches long. The shell beds will appear on highland and lowland reservoirs as well as on river systems and whenever you have gizzard shad in your lake and you have shell beds, you're going to have big bass. This is the exception to my rule that hard spots are going to have more quantity than quality. Now with that said, if you have a shell bed with a lot of gizzard shad around it or even crawfish, yeah you can catch a lot of numbers off those spots, 10 or 15 smaller fish. But if the gizzard shad are there, those bigger quality, better quality bait fish, you're going to catch really big bass, maybe not that many, and the quality can be even bigger than those caught out of brush piles. I've done a lot of damage on shell beds over the years. You may only catch 3 or 4 fish, but they're going to be 4 to 8 pounds. And as proof of this, our new Fish the Moment team member, Jimmy, went out to Lake Fork and caught five bass for 29 pounds, including a 10-pounder off of shell beds. If you guys are interested in learning more about shell beds, we're going to be making some videos in the near future showing a bunch of shell beds under the water, also with side imaging, down imaging, live scope, everything like that. So make sure you subscribe to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel for more in-depth knowledge about offshore bass fishing and electronics. If you guys like these videos, we really appreciate it if you left a like down below on the video and also hit that bell notification button so you can be notified when we get more videos out on the channel. Really quick, if you're struggling to find productive areas on your lake or are new to fishing and want to get pointed in the right direction about where to start fishing, head to our website, fishthemoment.com, and go to our Lake Breakdowns page. Here you'll find lake breakdowns from myself, Randy Blockett, and Matt Steffen. I focus on offshore breakdowns, Matt covers smallmouth, and Randy covers shallow water largemouth. These lake breakdowns provide 40 GPS waypoints that you can transfer straight to your fish finder. We give detailed area descriptions, the best conditions to fish each area, lure recommendations, and key strategies for the lake in general. We also give you a guide on how to transfer the waypoints straight to your fish finder so you don't have to worry about the technology gap there. You can scroll through and find breakdowns for all four seasons of the year. And we have a lot of lakes here, so you, you probably will find most of the major lakes in this list already. However, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom and don't see your lake in one of the four seasons, you can also get a personal lake breakdown from either Randy or Matt at the bottom of the page, and you can pick any lake in the country and get 40 waypoints picked out personally by Matt or Randy. Check out our lake breakdowns at fishthemoment.com. Next up, we have my go-to rock pile baits. And whenever I'm fishing in clear water and around rock piles, my go-to bait is going to be a Megabass Spark Shad. This is the three-inch Spark Shad on a little ball jig head. 
I'll throw anything from like a quarter ounce to a three eighths ounce ball jig head, depending on the depth of water. And all you do with this bait is cast it out, let it sink down to the bottom and reel it as slow as you possibly can around those rocks and around the boulders out there. If you have smallmouth or spotted bass in your lake, they'll eat this thing up. And I've also caught some big largemouth on it over the years as well. I'm gonna pair that on the Denali Covert Light, seven foot two, medium heavy power, fast action spinning rod with some 20 pound Sunline uh, braided line from a main line and six pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon leader line. I like six pound tests with this little swim bait because you're not trying to reel it in the rocks. You're trying to reel it just a foot or two over the rocks in that really clear water. The lighter line will keep that bait down in the water column so you can fish it deeper and it's a little bit less visible, giving that bait a little bit more natural action. I'm just throwing this on an old spinning reel, but there's a Max Pro Abu Garcia spinning reel link down in the description I've been using recently that's like 50 bucks at Walmart. So that's a nice one. In terms of uh, some other baits, one bait I love throwing on rock piles is a crank bait, just like the 6X Zero on the brush piles. But instead, I actually choose to throw this Megabass Deep X 300 crank bait instead. There's two reasons for that. One, I can cast this crankbait really, really far. It has a great weight transferring system. And it also comes through rocks really well in shallower water. I can actually fish this big deep diving crankbait as shallow as two to three feet of water, but I can also fish it out as deep as 10 to 12 feet. So it gives me a lot of versatility when I'm offshore. I don't have to have five different crankbaits tied on. And normally when you're fishing around the rocks, you're not gonna get this thing hung that much. So you can go with a little bit more expensive crankbait, this mega bass. And so you get the casting distance. It has a lot of great deflection to it. And it's kind of like my all around offshore crankbait around rocks. The deal with this bait is that you are trying to grind it in the rocks, so you need to have a little bit stouter line. I normally throw this uh, here on some 15 pound monofilament line. I'm not actually fishing it on fluorocarbon because I don't need um, to get this bait deeper or try to disguise the bait or anything like that. And the monofilament makes the bait run just a little bit shallower, which is good around those shallower rock piles. It has more stretch, which allows me to set the hook and have a little bit of give when I actually set the hook on the bait. And I find that this monofilament doesn't get nicked up as bad in the rocks as the fluorocarbon. That's just what I found personally. I don't know if that's actually true, but I just have been throwing this crankbait on mono for a while and absolutely works great. So that's my setup. I throw this on the Denali Covert Light, seven foot two, medium heavy power, moderate action crankbait rod, just a seven two crankbait rod with a Abu Garcia Black Max reel, six four to one. And that's my other go-to moving bait on those rock piles. The one more bait, the other bait that I throw around the rock piles and the hard spots as well, is going to be a shaky head. In addition to the football jig, my other slow moving bait is the shaky head. This is just a zoom trick worm. I'll throw it in the black color if I'm in dirtier water, watermelon candy if I'm in clear water. And I pair that on anything from like an eighth ounce to a quarter ounce shaky head jig head. This is the Jewel Squirrel Head Shaky Head. I like it because it has a little football shape, which comes through rocks a lot better than like a round ball shaky head in my experience. And all I'm going to do guys is just throw this thing around the rocks, drag it nice and slow. And if those fish are up there and they're very lethargic, maybe they're just tapping at the football jig or swiping at the crankbait and not getting it, you can a lot of times throw the shaky head up there dead stick it on those spots and then they'll eventually eat it. I'm pairing that with a Denali Lithium Pro 7 foot 4 medium heavy multi-spin spinning rod and I'm throwing this actually with some heavier duty line because I'm in and around those rocks. This is 30 pound Sunline braided line on the spinning reel with either 12 or 15 pound fluorocarbon for my uh, leader line pretty heavy line, especially for myself on spinning rods. I don't normally go this heavy, but I found that it doesn't affect the number of bites I get on this worm and I don't break off nearly as much. So I definitely go with a little bit heavier line for my leader on the spinning rod. And I'm just pairing this with an old uh, quantum smoke reel. I don't really know. I got it a long time ago. Again, I'll link an Abu Garcia reel that I'm using on a couple of other rods that works well. It's 50 bucks. So those are kind of my rock pile baits. You've seen my brush pile baits and hopefully that gives you a better idea of what baits to throw in these areas. And if you pair that with your information about when to fish the brush piles or the hard spots for the size of the fish, 
you'll be able to have a complete strategy going to the lake to put some big offshore fish in the boat.